everybody. Welcome back. Today is September 6th. We're doing AI and nonsense for the end of the week and the start of our fall. Or autumn. Nice. Yeah, like the 23rd, right? Is that when it officially starts? Is like end of September? Yeah. I mean, it'll probably be hot as hell for a long time, but... It's a brutal heat today. Yeah, it's like 98 degrees Ridiculous. while we're filming this. But it's not as hot as the... Uh, price on this company that wasn't a good transition <laughs> but people really want to throw money at them open ai in talks for funding round valuing it above a hundred billion dollars as part of this they also announced that they have 200 million active users but that's not enough to offset that amount no that, uh last time they did this it was 80 billion so they've just conjured up 20 billion dollars somewhere the one thing that i like about this is that with Meta and Mark Zuckerberg releasing a lot of the stuff that they're doing as free or open-ish, open-ish, really, um, it really undermines a lot of the value of what OpenAI is doing, which is probably good because ultimately the only way that we're going to be sure that an AI is actually not working against us is if it's fully open. Training model, how it was trained, everything. OpenAI will just buy it. <laughs> That's probably what's going to happen, right? Which is hilarious because OpenAI is the <laughs> opposite of OpenAI. It changed a lot since its inception, didn't it? And, uh, you know, the argument that AI is not going to take jobs, some people are still trying to beat that dead horse. It's sort of <laughs> transitioned now. It's like, well, yeah, some jobs will be lost, but it'll create jobs as well. There'll be new opportunities. That's a lie. <laughs> that is not what happens, and we have a beautiful case study. AI's impact on the Philippines. The world's call center capital shows what is to come. So things are in full-on panic mode in the Philippines if this Hindustan Times article is to be believed because AI has significantly displaced a huge number of call center workers. But not the capacity for the call centers. Mm -hmm. Like, AI is able to do most of the heavy lifting... Even the scam callers now, which I'm sure a lot of these <laughs> call centers are doing, will screen you to make sure that you're old before they kick you off to the scammer. How do they screen you, do you think? They ask you what, what's your age. Is. They're like, hey, oh, they'll just straight up ask. I want to make sure that you qualify for this Medicare program. I was thinking, like, because for me, as soon as I pick up the phone and I say hello, I was thinking it was going to, like, try to tell by my voice how old I was. But For a while, I thought that might be the case. And I tried to play around with it. I couldn't trick it. Uh, but no, they just straight up ask you questions. Mm. It's like a... See, by that point, I've already hung up. So It's pre-recorded, and they just walk you through a series of prompts. Do you remember Calvin Coolidge? Why? Yeah. Have you been to a drive-in theater? <laughs> it's not even that clever. It's like, hey, if you, to get this amazing Medicare deal, you have to be over the age of 75. Are you over the age of 75? <laughs> and Anthropic is probably the number two... A big AI system right now. Certainly the competitor to OpenAI in terms of buying API and stuff like that. And they are taking maybe a slightly better approach. Anthropic has published the quote-unquote system prompts that make Claude tick. It's a, it's a fun thing for AI researchers to trick the, uh, the AI that you're interacting with into revealing what its prompts are. People have done that to Copilot. Uh, people have done that for what Apple is planning to publish or planning to do with their AI system. And people have gotten access to that for OpenAI surreptitiously as well. So Anthropic is saying, here we go. So they point out, uh, anytime you try to get it to do something on the web, it will not follow your links. I mean, that's a pretty obvious one. It will not try to recognize any faces from a picture that you upload. In fact, it does very little to try to identify things in pictures. And it wants you to think that it like respects your views no matter what. So if you argue with Claude, Claude's going to be like, man, that's a good point. Even if it's not. <laughs> Just wants you to feel good. Yeah. <laughs> it would be fun to interact with Claude in such a way that it comes away with the, uh, the impressions like, man, this human is particularly lost and I'm going to have to really go out of my way to help them. <laughs> and over in Korea, they have an interesting issue. And when I first saw this headline, I was like, why would it be any different there? But apparently... It's because of the youth. They have found this new technology. They've grown up with it. They've embraced it. And they've used it for the worst possible reason. <laughs> South Korea faces a deep fake emergency of a um, 
pre-adult variety, but not in the way that you think. But also in the way that you think. So those Telegram channels and those like Indian encryptions, they're filled with school children deep faking each other. Yeah. Which is... Middle schoolers, high schoolers, yeah. I mean, you know, puberty's a hard time for a young girl. <laughs> Having to look at fake nudes of herself, probably not great. I guess once in a while maybe it goes in the other direction. Hilariously, the first place my brain went was, uh, you know, we're always talking about substituting Danny DeVito for every role in Lord of the Rings. It's like a bunch of high school students substituting themselves into the Lord of the Rings. That's the kind of nerdy thing I think you or me might have done. I don't <laughs> know that that's what, where these people's minds are. But. <laughs> Exhibit B under Children or Monsters this week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and like little children or monsters, but they're still sexually innocent. <laughs> and then you get into the high school, it's like, ooh, the worst possible combination. I said middle school for some of them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and that's even, ugh. I don't know what the Korean grades yeah. breakdown is. <laughs> Somebody, I, you, people who are too young. You guys had the uh, school systems are, are horribly broken comment, and somebody posted a link to a middle school, which was like, like fifth, sixth, or no, fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. And it was those like things that are prohibited. Like if you hear your students saying this is what it was, and it was like Riz and you know all that kind of stuff. That's just charisma. But also like the Hawk Tua thing was there, and I was like, uh, is that really a problem for sixth graders? She threw out the first pitch at a baseball game. Wow! And the girl that was with her was the catcher. Neat. Somebody paid them. <laughs> but also like in sixth grade, like I don't. People I, know. Yeah. And there was yeah. a girl at my school who was. <laughs> pregnant by uh, seventh. Wow. Yeah. Hey, listen, to that. it's kind of a natural inclination, right? We're animals. <laughs> but, but you'd think the parent, there's, where are the parents in this situation? But And uh, what's interesting, we talked about the Claude Waits because Google had their own AI waiting and prompting, which they might have been just a little too aggressive <laughs> on to try to make it, uh, you know, acceptable to all people and inclusive which made it very inaccurate. They're going to try again. Google to relaunch tool for creating AI-generated images of people after pulling a service due to inaccuracies. There was a lot of... Fake historical stuff going around previously. Yeah, yeah that it would. Uh, no matter what prompt you gave it, it would make it diverse. Even certain militaries that no one wants to be a part of mm -hmm. in history. And definitely wasn't diverse. And AI product reviews, uh, probably the majority at this point, would you say? <laughs> this, was a, this was a failed ad agency experiment that they were using to defraud their customers out of money, I think. What else did they do? <laughs> <laughs> Gannett is shuttering site accused of publishing AI product reviews. So this was a website where it was just filled with drivel and it was all AI generated and none of it was even tangentially connected to reality. And somebody said, hey, wait a minute, the emperor has no clothes. It was somebody in the company. And they were like, oops, our bad. I guess we'll delete it. Some people who were actually writing product reviews saw the product reviews on the website. And they're like, who is this? Have you guys <laughs> met this person? And then they looked him up on like LinkedIn or, or like anywhere online and they couldn't find him. Because they're not real. They're, they're getting rid of the whole site, though. Not just the, yeah. the articles that were AI generated. They just nuked they're just the whole thing. Going to get rid of everything. And the reason is because the business model was to sell ads on fluff to maintain the the, uh, the to margins. waste no the, the, it's to waste the consumer's time. They look up a product, <laughs> they go to the website, and then they're just like, "What is this?" And then they leave. But they got your impression. And once again, we've left the uh, the narrative of AI is not going to take jobs, and we've entered into the narrative of. AI is taking everyone's jobs, and how great is it? It's so good. <laughs> Amazon CEO Andy Jassy says the company's AI assistant has saved $260 million and 4,500 developer years of work. It's been a game changer for us. He was, of course, talking about Java conversions, converting programs that were written in old versions of Java to newer versions of Java. And a lot of the Java developers for Amazon went out of their way to uh, come out of the woodwork to say that some of this is kind of true, but also what Andy Jassy was saying, he has no idea. 
I can't wait till something like catastrophic happens and then they have to rehire those people. <laughs> Are you saying that the CEOs of these companies never really understand the product in the modern day? No. It's weird, isn't it? And AI is going to be doing everything, even the things that you might think, ooh, that sounds dangerous. They're going to do it. Police officers are starting to use AI chatbots to write crime reports. Will they hold up in court? It's like, it's like hello, a a AI. Can you summarize all these emails and all this body cam footage and just, yeah, this looks good. I'm going to half read this. They mentioned that like when they get body cam footage now, it's making the cops, like, they, they say out loud what's happening. Because then they don't have to top it up themselves. Yeah. Interestingly, they experimented with the video footage, and apparently AI started making uncomfortable correlations <laughs> about who was committing all the crime, and they are like, oh, no, 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 we can't do that anymore. <laughs> just make it based on audio. But at that point, if it's just based on audio, like, you could just be lying. Cops would never lie. Oh. <laughs> uh, it's also interesting that so far... Uh, this is only when there is no arrest. Mm. So you can only summarize something that, you know, it needs a report, but nothing really major happened. How long do you think it'll take? It's already happening. It was just like in South Park when it's like, it's coming right for us. It's like, stop resisting. And it's like, the the video was like, there's no one resisting. And now where it's audio only, it's like, oh yes, the suspect appears to be resisting. Did anyone actually watch the video? No, I just read the AI summary. Well, okay, then let me pose another question. How long until the robot is pinning you to the ground and writing the report? Oh. <laughs> Kansas City Shopping Center credits a 600-pound AI security robot with crime reduction. The, the, the video for this was very weird. Like, it was very weirdly edited. Like, the sound quality was very strange. Was it? It was... Uh, this was... Uh, there was an a there was a sci-fi where this exact thing happened and a little door would open up in the robot and it would just hit you with a trank dart and it's been lampooned in everything including idiocracy where the dude was freaking out in idiocracy and it was like here is your psychiatric medic medication sir and it's like i don't need psychiatric medication to calm down this is this one doesn't do anything like it just records everything so like they mentioned they had someone like flee or whatever after stealing and it got their license plate number but you're leaving out an important point because here is the darkness of the Panopticon total surveillance future, mm. right? They did not just say uh, license plate. It was also IPs, right? IP address yeah. of the car. Yeah. Yeah. Your car's IP address. You probably didn't think about that when you started shoplifting, did you? <laughs> <laughs> Also, all the MAC addresses of... I wasn't sure about IP address. I was thinking maybe it was like your Wi-Fi MAC address or something like that. Because that would be more readily available from um, the RF signals floating around you. And a lot of retail stores were doing that already. It's like, let's keep track of their Bluetooth MAC to know if, if they're back. They might have just not understood the, yeah. the difference. And guess who's getting a lot more vacation time? <laughs> Although I guess technically they are working. Uh, CNBC has the headline. We covered this a little bit last week, but the Boeing Starliner is returning empty as NASA turns to SpaceX to bring the astronauts back from the International Space Station. Now, the Starliner hasn't left yet. It's going to leave in June oh. on a completely autopilot kind of a thing. And it's going to be way before then, isn't it? Yeah. No, no, no. Starliner. Well, I thought it was June. Is what the article said. I thought June twenty twenty five. No, it's going to leave before they get rescued, right? I thought. I thought it was after. Maybe not. Oh, maybe. Um, How many docks do they have? Two. Okay. So it's a little dicey. It's like the Starliner is just stuck in this dock from now until the end of time, I guess, maybe, because they didn't have a fully automated undocking procedure. Like somebody has to be inside. It says Boeing will return the Starliner bef without the astronauts. I guess that could still be true if they'd left beforehand. Yeah. I don't think they would ride it that way, though. Anyway, they're going to do a lot more time. They're going to be spending... Christmas and Thanksgiving and New <laughs> Year on the space station. It's like uh, we should do a Space Gilligan's Island. We could probably write the pilot episode of that because this is literally Space Gilligan's Island. I mean, those were kind of everyman people. These are trained astronauts. An eight-day tour. Will they have to get like a, a, a remote ballot? Will they have special voting privileges? <laughs> <laughs> Mail in. Mission controls mm. mocking you for your voting choices. <laughs> yeah. You have to tell someone. Houston, I would like to cast a vote for. And uh, 
That is that is bad news for Boeing. That is a very very bad PR time for Boeing, and it might be so bad that they're just like throwing their hands up. We're not. We're done. We've failed. The Reuters headline is Boeing Lockheed Martin in talks to sell their rocket launch firm ULA to Sierra Space. Even NASA was saying, "Oh, come on now, guys, don't don't nope out. Don't leave us alone with Elon. Come on." <laughs> and Wizards of the Coast cannot stop kicking their own ass <laughs> they are not smart they're not good at being in charge of dungeons and dragons and the fan base is rabid DD publisher walks back controversial changes to online tools at this point DD fans have to be wondering what it would cost to form a co-op to just buy the rights to DD and have it run by committee <laughs> or oh. Don't use their stupid online tools. Use yeah, paper. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, I saw a lot of the comments I was reading about it. People were saying, like, this doesn't really affect me because I just used the paper because I knew that this would eventually happen where it would mess with my character sheet. And here's another crazy idea with tabletop RPG gaming. If there's part of the rules you don't like, you don't have to follow them. <laughs> you can just make it all up. No, 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 no. I have to be official. Krista, uh, you are the artist among us. Mm. How far would you be willing to go to fit in to enjoy fine art? Not this far. Mm, I don't think I would either. Marseille Museum opens up to naturalist ex- exhibition to nude visitors. My favorite, my favorite comment in this story was someone being like, it's England, it's cold here. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we don't do the nudism thing very much. I bet they do keep it probably for the preservation of the works, right? You have a certain temperature, yeah. Probably pretty Ideally. cold, right? Yeah. So Humidity gonna, controlled, all that kind of thing. There's going to be some uh, shrinkage. Mm. Also, some. Uh, they're going to be both, depending on your gender, they're going to be too uh, turgid or mm. not turgid enough. But at least you can enjoy it. Now, there is one caveat. You have to wear shoes. I wonder, I wonder if that's like a, a public... No, it's because the flooring can give you splinters. Oh. It's an old building. <laughs> I was thinking it was like, you know, no shoes, no shirt. But I, yeah, I guess it's just... <laughs> and they said, you'll probably be shamed if you show up here with clothes on. <laughs> but what about an adult diaper? <laughs> I was thinking, what if they have, you know, what if this is just a PR stunt and they really only have nude days one or two days a week and the other days are closed days? And what if you get them mixed up and you show up and it's like, ah? Oh. I mean, if they did that, it would, you know, that'd be pretty brilliant, actually. Now, I got to admit, uh, I guess I stopped watching too early. Was this guy after Bob Vila? Yeah. I, I don't know this guy. Really? This old house is uh, Roger Cook dead at 70. This was sad to me, and I included this, and it probably makes everyone else sad. Because if you look him up, if you look up, like, house tutorial stuff on their YouTube channel, he pops up. Yeah, he's pretty heavy on their YouTube channel, is what I was going to say. Is Vila dead? No, I don't think so. He's got to be up there, right? Yeah. Yeah, Bob Vila got to where he was just, he was occasionally showing up on some of the, uh, it's like, oh, here's an old Victorian brownstone that we're redoing for $17 million in New York. It's just like, wow, they're really doing it nice. Uh-huh. It's like, here's how we, we hid the plumbing and wainscoting. And it's like, this is brilliant, but ain't nobody got time to do it that way. That's, uh, I, I liked his YouTube tutorials. Like Sometimes if you need to learn how to do something, it was very calm, clear, knew exactly what was happening, I, not I'll, filled with ads. I also really like, uh, was it Norm Abrams, the new Yankee workshop guy? They let him in on the Bob Vila empire, uh, mm-hmm. this old house empire, I guess I should say, a, a little bit also. And he was, seems like a really, really cool dude. Sad. Yeah, the uh, frugal gourmet sound like, seemed like a cool dude too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that didn't work out <laughs> at all. Uh, and never this, meet your heroes <laughs> and this didn't work out because uh, we have now entered into a phase where the corruption is so extreme that they're baking it in there's an end user license agreement for free speech that's where we are right now <laughs> a woman was arrested at a surprise meeting the city has a law that bans criticizing officials that is a city called surprise uh. the meeting was not a surprise <laughs> surprise but she got a surprise because it turns out you have to fill out a form to register to be a speaker. To, and guess what you agree not to do? Criticize in any way. So she was arrested. That seems like a contract violation, not an arrestable offense. 
That's what she said. <laughs> and they said, you're arrested. <laughs> I have a feeling that if she spends the $7 million that it will take to get to the Supreme Court, even the Supreme Court will say, uh, what is this? What, what are you doing? Well, that makes this headline interesting because, uh, you know, they hate us for our freedoms. Although those are not really Twindling. there anymore, are they? Uh. But I guess we do have to admit we have more than this. North Korea orders all students abroad to return home for ideological education. What do we just say no? <laughs> no I think I'm going to stay. Your family would not uh. enjoy that. What if you don't have a family? Then you're not allowed to leave. Oh, wow. They've thought of that, Krista. <laughs> <sighs> they're very good at what they're the doing. Cruelty's right. the point, I guess. Yeah. I could not figure out where to land on this one. I can actually see this from both directions. It's not fair, quote unquote. South Strand parents of children playing sports in community area issued a cease and desist from the homeowners association. So in common areas, if you're paying into an HOA, everyone in the HOA has the right to use the common areas. But the parents of these children are using the common area. But the HOA says no. The children are monsters, even though they're not really in this case. But, but if the ch- children live there and they're like family members of the people in the HOA. But here's the thing. They interviewed some other people and they were like, no, you don't understand. They're not just like, oh, let's get together after school. They have uni- uniforms. There are referees. They set up tents to serve water and concessions. They have uniforms. So... It's kind of like an organized sports league. And who decides who gets to participate? What if you use some of the HOA money to fund, you know, it's like you have to go here now to do that. Well, I mean, this is the place for it, right? Like, there's a reason they have this area. I'm, I have a hard time seeing anything from the HOA's point of view. My well, neighbor runs a like a, a little league. He's got He just made a baseball diamond in his yard. And like, yeah, sometimes you hear the kids screaming, but like... That's just part of having neighbors. <laughs> what, what if I wanted to use that space for something not related to children? Couldn't you ask? Like, is there a, They're on a schedule. Odd process? Yeah, then, then make a... You don't get special treatment because you got kids. I hate that. Well, it's hate they, but they made a, if they made a, an appointment, then who cares? I don't know if they're like... But if you say perpetually, hey, we've got the space from now on every Thursday at this time, that's not cool. That's pretty, I don't know, like. People shouldn't live. In yeah, this HOAs area. are just dumb in general. I mean, you, you deserve what you get, I guess, right? If you buy into that. Yeah, although a lot of places it's getting harder to find without an HOA. But. And uh, I think, you know, we're all kind of not looking for the spotlight. We don't really want to be called on the carpet. I, don't, I do not wish to be perceived. <laughs> and this child certainly did not either. Teacher in Korea sued for emotional abuse after asking student to solve problem on a chalkboard. Turns out that this family might be troublemakers in this uh-huh. regard because there was a lot of other complaints. The school has excused the teacher entirely. Really? That's disappointing. That but the disappointing. lawsuit. Not surprising, but disappointing. Is outside the school's venue, so I guess it still goes forward. I think it's one of the tools in the teacher's toolbox is to. Uh, you know, motivate the kids to know what they're doing is to, it's like, you could be called to the chalkboard. You'd better put some effort into learning this. I mean, some kids are just always going to struggle with that. Like popcorn reading, like popcorn reading is terrible. Yeah. But I mean, like some people do benefit from that. So like, could you argue that you're interrupting another kid's style of learning to cater to one if you don't let them do a book report and say it out loud. Like, the, the easy solution for that is to hire a teacher that actually cares and not one that is cruel. Yeah, but Is that cruel, though? If your students are idiots, is it cruel to try and fix them? If that kid's sitting there playing on a phone. Yeah. Well, I mean, that seems like willful idiocy, which is the worst kind. It's raining. Yeah. yeah. I it was thundering left, a minute ago. Yeah, I almost left my windows open. I'm glad I didn't. It's, it's not so much rain as the super saturation of water hit the tipping point, and it's just... It's it, finally It has to go over. somewhere. Yeah. Well, in Colorado, you know, it's, it's popular to take your office and get everybody together, go on a retreat, do some trust building, bring them together as a group. This particular group could not have failed more spectacularly <laughs> at togetherness. 
Hiker left behind on mountain by co-workers during office retreat, stranded overnight amid freezing rain and high winds. So this was a pretty difficult climb, I guess. And uh, <laughs> they, he, this guy wanted to get to the summit. And the other people were like, dude, we're not going to the summit. He's like, I'm going to the summit. So they're like, all right, you're on your own. Which again, <laughs> team building. Yeah. But here's where the team building really failed. On their way down, they collected all the flags that showed you the way back down. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So he immediately became lost and had to weather a horrible storm by himself. That's uh, So this is from Colorado News. Apparently in Colorado, it's very common, like, you want to make it to the peak or over a pass by noon because it will storm and it will get really cold. That's what he said and he yeah. experienced. Yeah. Which you would think, if you... If you're hiking on a trail like that, you would know that. And he would be like, maybe I shouldn't push for the peak because everyone else is slowing me down. Like, And just follow the group this time. Maybe come out on my own time and do a quicker ascent. No one made the right choice. No, no one, yeah. And this man definitely made the wrong choice. And this is one of the most horrific stories <laughs> that has ever been included here. Uh, husband admits to adding Coke and MDMA to his wife's coca-cola in hopes that he would marry her daughter dude was 71 he's gonna be four years in prison now he might, four years wow yeah a little light huh a little light yeah the but he was maybe manipulated because it was the daughter and her friend who were providing him with the drugs and encouraging him they wanted the mother out of the way so they could get the house and her life insurance policy and they rewarded him with certain favors when he would drug her and she would go to sleep for 13 hours. So that was his motivation. It's a dark one. I, uh, there's no winners in this story. That's true. Well, but the woman survived. I get, well, I mean, but then you wake up and it's like, let me explain to you what's just happened to you, ma'am. But now she can get away from that. That's, yeah, hopefully. How do you get away from your child? Who did that to you? I think if my child tried to kill me, I could... You could sever yeah, that tie, yeah. Through. If I, as a child, if I tried to kill my parents, I would understand if they... They distanced. didn't, they distanced themselves a little bit. Maybe only come around to Christmas. And uh, what is the value of emergency tools? Who do you sell that to? Mm. How do you fence it? Do you break it down for scrap? <laughs> Probably. Metal, metal recycling. Yeah. yeah. Thief steals a Jaws of Life tool after Oakland firefighters rescue girl stuck in a swing. The girl was apparently just too big for the swing. Like, she was too old and she tried to stuff herself into it and got stuck. I was about to say, it. haven't all of us done that once where you're like, you know, one, one more time you're like, I'm going to get on the kid's swing at the park and then it's like you almost get stuck. I don't understand, like... Aren't they just chains? Like, I there's guess it a, has a seat. There's like a, for younger kids, they have one that's like, it almost looks like a diaper on chains. Now this was metal. Oh. Yeah. That's wow. why they had to use that tool. Oh, wow. They couldn't pry her out of it. And they said she was like screaming and freaking out. And that's why they kind of left it to the side. Because they were trying to calm her down. Yeah, and someone like, was like, I can take this. <laughs> Weighs 55 pounds. So wow. somebody uh, lugged it away quickly. Not ultralight. And, uh, you know, this man, I guess he was trying to be a little bit more wholesome with his children. He was trying to teach them his trade. You know, bring your daughter to work. Show her what's going on. But he took it too far. Austrian surgeon, quote unquote, let teenage daughter drill a hole in patient's skull. And this actually, the, the patient didn't realize that it was him until he read about it in the news months later. Oops. I, what excuse could you have for that? She really wanted to? Maybe lead poisoning. Dad! <laughs> it's like, you see the, ki the kids in, uh, like they always want to do the thing. They want to push the elevator button or mm. they want to operate whatever the thing is. They want to help. Yeah. She wanted to help really bad. I think it was 13. She'd be past that at that age. Chrissy, you are a big consumer of breakfast cereal. What's the last time you had some? I actually don't, don't eat it a whole lot anymore. I do like, I like granola. But it's probably also the same th problem, though. Well, you're lucky that you haven't been eating it. Lawsuit alleges high levels of lead in General Mills Cocoa Puffs cereal. Mm. Well, it does, it does act as a sweetener. 
I don't, <laughs> I don't know what <laughs> it says about me that uh, when I saw this article and I, I added, I was like, man, I should get some Cocoa Puffs. Like, they are delicious, aren't they? They are, yeah. But here's the thing about it. The standard serving has high levels of lead. Who eats the standard serving? <laughs> I don't even know what it is, it's, to be honest. It's like a tiny, tiny Like a fourth of a cup, like, yeah. It's like four puffs. <laughs> <laughs> I got to eat at least three times that many puffs. So if you're going through half a bag, you're really loading on the lead. Ooh. Something, something processed food is the enemy. Well, that's an interesting one because this article changed headlines. <laughs> mm. See, the headline used to be much more obviously propaganda. <laughs> and people pushed against it, but it is still so much propaganda. Oh, and my phone's ringing. Why one dietitian is speaking up for ultra processed foods. So there was an article about ultra processed foods killing you, and this article breaks that down. And this dietitian says, well, certain ultra-processed foods are probably okay. You know, obviously not Cheetos, which is an ultra-processed food. If you just eat Cheetos, that's going to kill you. But she was talking about how she was eating frozen burritos and God knows what else. And I was like, oh, this was actually a more balanced diet than what I was eating before. So the question of why one dietitian is speaking up for ultra-processed foods is because they were paid. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't in the article. I'm inferring that. The other argument made here was... Well, ultra-processed foods are bad, yeah, but you know, that's like 80% of the poor people's diet, and we mustn't judge them. Well, and it's like, that's fair, but surely, does that mean we can maybe just have better food for everybody? Is like, should no. we not strive for something better? Krista, they might get sad, so we should just let them poison themselves so that they're not sad. We, could we maybe like make it so people have time to cook and spend time with their families? No, just keep letting them eat the garbage and get cancer. That's basically your argument. Yeah. Ugh. I love it when it's so obvious. And here's one that I had to add because, you know, Wendell's uh, he, he's obsessed. Even though he can't eat cows. He's obsessed with genetically modifying the them. cow. And the madness that was just a joke. It's not a joke anymore. <laughs> Scientists may have found a radical solution for making your hamburger less bad for the planet. This is Centacow 0.01. They're going to genetically modify. Like, like, this talks about how they took a calf and they cut its stomach open from, you know, and it's just like. Which oh, one? Don't gonna, they have like seven? We're going to figure this out. This is sushi. Oh. <laughs> Which is not ironically named. Sushi has been genetically modified and they figured out that red seaweed or algae or something will uh, keep them from farting so much or burping. So they're playing God and mixing up all this stuff and they're trying to make cows. The end result is scent a cow. We're just going to grow a cow in a big vat and it's going to look like a scent a cow. Like, how hard is this? Well, apparently it's quite difficult. <laughs> <laughs> they're still struggling with it. Turns out that just twisting cows away from the very nature. And the other thing about it is, like, in order to get the cows to not do this, you still have to feed them a special diet. You can't just let them eat grass. Mm. Well, that's the Monsanto plan. I mean, that's brilliant. You can't yeah. just grow corn. Profits yeah. everywhere, yeah. And you can grow the special corn that can't be reproduced. The twinkle in the eye of the guy who's like, wait a minute, we can make <laughs> cows that can't eat grass? They have to eat our proprietary blend to be legal? And we can own all of the parts of this production? If the cows don't eat only Brondo, then it will poison the planet. I bet the one of the things that's unreported here is like BlackRock buys every hectare of <laughs> red seaweed generating land and coastline in the world. And uh, when it comes to adopting little disabled dogs, that's a beautiful thing, right? You take a, a special needs pet into your home, but some people want it too much. A very scary person. Woman pulled out a gun when denied dog adoption, Tampa police say. This was, uh, I, I read this right before I went to sleep last night, and I dreamed that this was an always sunny skit. So this was a special needs dog that was handicapped, and she had a bunch of other dogs. And so when she showed up with a bunch of other dogs, the, the people that had this dog for adoption read the room correctly and said, we well, don't think this dog is going to be a good fit for you because you obviously have a lot of other dogs you have to care for. So she pulled a gun. Then just pull a gun, put the woman on her knees, Ooh. and put it to her forehead. Ooh. And was like, I'm taking this dog. The other woman was smart enough, and she said, because she was holding this woman's dogs while she like loved on the disabled dogs, she was like, I'm going to let these dogs go unless you leave right now. 
And so she was willing to put the gun away and collect her existing dogs and leave. I feel bad for the other dogs who had to go home with this lady. Uh, yeah. No arrest so far when they printed this article. I mean, doesn't this read read like an Always Sunny skit where like Frank pulls out a pistol and I was like, no, I have to have this. And it's just, I mean, it seems like it's an Always Sunny episode. Well, this seems like an Always Sunny episode. I don't know if this is propaganda at this point. I don't either, but I love these headlines. Every time I see them, I'm like, okay. Because we had the bear. Now, he admitted to the bear. Yeah. He did. And then we were like, oh, I don't know. I might. I wouldn't eat roadkill he prepared, but I'd eat roadkill. This is a story from his daughter. I guess she wrote it in a biography or autobiography or something like that previously. So maybe not even in response to the presidential race. But this is a man who, and Krista, I, I was talking about this on the stream the other night. Collecting skulls, a little weird. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Environmental group calls for investigation of RFK Jr. chainsawing whalehead story. It's probably just a story, but it might not be a story because the Central Park bear thing was not a story. What? Did he give a reason? He just loves skulls. That's why he got the bear. Did he like paint it or do he use a craft or? I don't know. I mean, like it, it's probably taxonomy. Or? It probably still exists taxonomy. somewhere, right? We could go find it. He was just tooling around up there in the That's a big animal to have to that's a lot of He strapped it he strapped it to the top of the car. And the daughter described the juices like oh, draining down that's past bad. the weather stripping. Oh the smell. You can never get that smell out of that car. That's just, it's a guy, it's a rich kid who was never told no. And it's just like cruising through <laughs> life doing what he feels like. Oh, right? you know it'd be cool if we turned this thing that washed up on the beach into an heirloom. Yeah. Like mm. I would like to collect that skull. Also, apparently, uh, he moved it across state lines, which would have been illegal. Yeah. Oh. I don't know what the statute of limitations is on that. And dolphins, we all know, are very social creatures, close to us in those terms. But what happens when one gets excluded? Lonely dolphin may be behind a series of attacks on swimmers in Japan. Apparently, one swimmer had both hands bitten. <gasps> it's just an ill-tempered dolphin. It's a buster. Or maybe not ill-tempered. They describe that dolphins, when they're playing with one another, they nip. You know, yeah. it's like, and oh. so it might just be like, hey, friend, I've been kicked out of my social group. That's, uh, puppies will do that. So when puppies are like real bitey when they're little, and apparently like you have to kind of, well, I mean, I had to do this with Rue. Like you have to kind of teach them like play stops when you bite too hard. And then you have to like withdraw your hands. Do you think you could teach this dolphin? Probably not. <laughs> dolphins are terrible. You can't teach an old dolphin new tricks. <laughs> And the most fun animal story oh. of the week is this guy who, you know, they say that your, uh, your eyes were bigger than your mouth. <laughs> Not this guy. Injured Missouri bald eagle actually too fat to fly <laughs> after gorging on raccoon. <laughs> so this guy was in a field Hungry and people boy. saw him like trying to flap and, was, and they were like, oh, he's wounded. <laughs> so they called the, the eagle rescue <laughs> and they did some x-rays. And that's just a bunch of raccoon right there. Ugh. He was stuffed. A couple of days later, flew away happily. Oh, good, good, good one to end on. Happy story. A healthy bowel movement. <laughs> yeah. Deposited some raccoon on somebody's windshield. Oh. <laughs> There's a lot of, uh, I guess the eagles are starting to come back a little bit. There's a lot of videos that have showed up on YouTube where, like the eagle, somebody had a kitten in their car. And the eagle landed on the hood of their car and was like trying to steal the eagle <laughs> through the windshield. Frantically, yeah. There's a there's a nesting pair not far from where I live. Some of my neighbors take pictures of them and post. Oh, you should get some dead raccoons and and yeah, them. try to get them closer. Yeah, they're a little down the road from where I am, but I've seen photos of them. Neat. Well, good riddance to August. Yeah. Also, it's uh. Well, I guess. It's, oh wait, it's not. It's. It's September. September. Yeah, I was about to say Labor Day as well, but that's for us, not for them. Labor Day's done. Labor Day's not for you. Mm. You're not allowed to enjoy it. So think think about that. At this point, I guess you already have. Yeah. You have to to go back and pay that back, any enjoyment that you had Uh during Labor Day. Anyway, we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Store.level1text.com. Bye.